Welcome back to This Can Make Us Famous podcast. I'm your host, Jason. With me is my trusty sidekick, Charlie Bartha. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the show, Charlie. Thank you for being here. Like always, you're faithful. You're faithful, Charlie. Uh, We got a lot to talk about today, so we're just going to jump right on in. Well, man, there's a, there's just so much to say with all the craziness going on in this world. It is crazy right now. Um, and there's just so many views, so many opinions, just so much chaos. I mean, first it was, you know, COVID-19, coronavirus, which was historic, just insane. And then we just slip into this. So um, I just wanted to um, just kind of move along pretty quickly through all this. I have a, a, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine. He used to be my boss, um, and I invited him to be on the show, so I have him on hold, and I'm going to go ahead and introduce him. His name is Mr. Desmond, and uh, he's on the phone right now, and he's going to answer some of our questions about what's going on. Uh, Desmond is African-American in the United States, and I thought he would be perfect to have on the show to share his views on what's going on, and so... Desmond, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. Awesome. So why don't you just do a really quick introduction of who you are and where you're from and a little bit about yourself. Well, I am uh, originally from New York, from Brooklyn, New York, Mm -hmm. and I have been working in ministry for a long time. Uh, That's how we met working mm-hmm. in ministry yep. and um i love working with youth um they make it all worth it <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know even though the they're series. yeah pain yeah they're pains in the neck a lot of times <laughs> but uh boy do we have some stories <laughs> yes we'll save that for another day <laughs> uh-huh <laughs> um and uh i mean i love life and yeah. I've been through a lot. I'm a yeah. recovered addict, and um, I feel like uh, my story is just a story of redemption, mm-hmm. and um, and basically, you know, what is possible when uh, when the Lord gets a hold of you, mm-hmm. that uh, He right. can really change your life. Yeah, you know. Um, That's right. Yeah. So I'm married. I'm a father of three, and. Um, I I didn't think that I deserved any of this mm-hmm. because I you know I've just made so many mistakes in my life right. and I, I never thought that I would get a chance to um, to have a family right and uh, so I'm just blessed to have a family yeah and, you have an amazing you know, family too by the way. And uh, your son, dude, is so brilliant. He is incredibly smart. It's amazing, and I bet he's really tall now since the last time I saw him. Yeah, yeah, he's he's stretching out. Let me tell you, <laughs> he's definitely a... stretching out, man. Yeah. Well, you got a, um, you got a beautiful could... family. You you guys. Uh, he lives down in Texas. Uh, what is it like, Fort Worth area? Yeah, Fort Worth. So it's probably burning hot right now down there. It's getting there. Yeah. It's definitely getting there. We are, um, wow. we are, yeah, it's heating up. I, I don't miss that so. part of Texas. I, I liked everything else, but uh, the heat was brutal, man. Uh, so moving along here, I just, since we know who you are, um, a little bit about you, I just want to uh, hear your viewpoint on what's going on in this country. Obviously, you've been following. It, it's impossible to not know what's going on. Uh, it's just total chaos. I mean, we went from uh, the coronavirus epidemic straight into another, I would say, epidemic. I mean, what's your what do you think about this? What's going on? Well, I mean, the there there's people that are hurting. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's people that want something better for, you know, they they want something better. They're they're tired of dying. Mm-hmm. You know, for lack of a, you know, any other way to put it, it's it's kind of like, you know, let us live, let us be equal, mm-hmm. let us, 
you know, it, it, you know, like we can't take it anymore. We, we are not, we cannot just stand by and, and just be killed um, over and over and over again with no real regard for our lives, Mm -hmm. you know? Um, So let's start the conversation. Right. You know, and, uh, well, I that, mean, that's we, why. Yeah. So yeah, conversation I mean, is, you know, that's key, but the, what's happening out of all this, you know, with the, the riots, I mean, uh, I agree with what you're saying about like, Hey, we need to sit down. We need to, this needs to be a talk. Like what's going on? Why is this kind of stuff happening? And what should our response be? Should it be the violence that's going on? Or should it be like some more, like, is there, what creative ways could we do this kind of stuff? Or does it take Uh, violence? It will. Well, this is the thing. The violence is not, well, the violence is not the goal. And it, it, the violence is kind of like extra. Whenever there's riot and when there's unrest, there is looting, you know, like, so unrest, civil unrest leads to violence, leads to looting. Mm-hmm. You know, be as as at least the chaos, I should say. And in the midst of chaos, uh, the enemy is there in the chaos. So mm-hmm. there is violence, there's looting, there's assault, yeah. there, you know, there's crime. Like in the midst of the chaos, there is always somebody looking to see how they can get ahead and do something dastardly that they couldn't get mm-hmm. away with during the regular right. time in well, the midst of the chaos. That's a good way to put so, it. So, yeah. So it's like, there are there are many people that are upset and angry, but these people were protesting peacefully. Mm-hmm. Okay, no one came out and said, you know, we're just going to beat up cops and we're, you right. know, I, I mean, they might not have been saying nice things, but there were peaceful protests for the most part. Okay, looting ended up happening. Uh, I mean, it just when you have, it's kind of like um, a forest that's been in the middle of a drought. Mm-hmm. And everything is bone dry, and all it takes is one spark, and right. everything's on fire. On fire yeah. You know, yeah, it's th- that's what this is. It's a powder keg. Mm-hmm. This is years and years of pent up rage and aggression coming out Surfacing, into this, yeah. Yeah. and now things are on fire. And it's like, well, listen to us. Well, what do you think about? I mean, the, there's a lot of reports coming out that. Um, there's a, the people that were arrested were out of town people. They're not even from there. So there's people coming from other areas just specifically to start trouble. I mean, you, did you see the video where the, the, oh, I, I talked to you about that earlier. Yeah. Yeah. The with piles those, those of bricks. Guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they're wow. Whether they're from out of town or whether they're from in town, there are some bigger, there's bigger forces at work. So there's a principle called the broken window principle, where in the middle of unrest, if windows are broken, it will lead people to do things that they otherwise wouldn't do because they're already riled up. They're already hopped up on adrenaline. They're already mad and they're angry. And so it's kind of like there's windows broken. There are bricks laying around, you know, like. Right. Yeah, so it's like, yeah, I'm just going to get in it. It only takes one thing. Someone does something, that mob mentality, someone, you know, threatens you, and then you're like, oh, let's get them. Yeah. You know, boom, boom, mess them up. Like, And yeah. every before you know it, people are doing stuff that they wouldn't do because they're not thinking. They're acting as a mob. Emotion, yeah, they're, they're, they're going off of their emotions, and we know, you know how that leads us. When you follow emotions, it's, uh, it's not a good thing at times and yeah. especially and in this works, situation it works both ways as well because the police have emotions too okay sure, so the yeah. policeman's job their job is to protect and serve yeah and if i'm a good policeman and i'm being forced to be away from my family in the midst of all this i'm yeah. not happy and when i tell someone to get back in their house or to stop walking towards me or whatever command and they don't listen and all day i'm being told that i'm racist and that I'm the problem, and that I'm a pig, and so on and so forth, you know, that builds up too, you know? Mm-hmm. And some of these guys are also just itching for some action. This is the the only time when they really get some real action. They right. know that they can, it's chaos, and they can just go out and just do whatever. It's like, you know, yeah. you think about some it's of these guys fun. just went, 
went into the army and they came home and they were like, I'm going to be in law enforcement and I'm going to bust some heads. And I'm, you know, like, right. Oh that, yeah. That, that little that, man syndrome yeah. where you, yeah. Mm. Um, yes. Well, I like what you said um, earlier when you talked about like the tensions and, and how it just takes one thing like broken glass. And when you said that, I wanted to, um, I wanted to, I ask you what you thought about the um, the guy with the umbrella. Did you did you hear about that? The yeah, the I've guy seen that it. basically it. started it all, and they don't yeah, even know who he is. No, and you know he's not a protester. No and he's a white guy he too, like that. Yeah, he's white. He's he's hiding his his identity. He didn't fight the guy. You know, he's just there causing unrest. He's so out of place. He's just there breaking windows. He's not saying. For, you know, justice for George, nothing. Right. He's just breaking windows. He started it it's, on purpose because, I mean, he was, it was like the, what do you call Paul Revere, the shot that started the Revolutionary War. Right. This was the, the thing that did that. And I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I wanted to ask you this, um, after talking about all that, do you believe that, um, that there's like global elite or people of a higher power that that are causing this kind of stuff. They're they're using a, a legitimate story. Like, you know, George Floyd was legitimately killed. That was horrible what happened. But there, do you think the media and the, you know, any kind of global elite kind of people behind the scenes are using that for their benefit instead of, you know, for George mm-hmm. Floyd and his family? Yeah, there's always somebody in power using an agenda. Mm-hmm. Like that's how people get into power because they're smart and they know even, you know, like for instance a war or a thing, there are multiple ways in which it can be used to someone's advantage. It's right. like when you think of think about TV shows and the dastardly villain, it's like Okay, something happens, you know, the the wind, they thought the wind was going to blow east, but it blows west. And he's like, well, now it's blowing west. I can do that. I can change up my strategy and do this. Like, there's always a way that you can use unrest, that you can use these kind of situations to, mm-hmm. because while everyone's concentrating on this, something else is going on. It's mm-hmm. like, we stop concentrating on Corona. We, yeah. uh, you know, like, I, I mean, who knows what, the Supreme Court actually ruled on something. The Supreme Court made a ruling. Uh, something having to do with church, but I can't remember. But it was 5-4. And it, it was 5-4 in favor. Like, it wow. wasn't the five conservatives. Like, some a conservative broke ranks in order to pass this. Wow. Um, but I'm just saying, so, like, there are important things, like, that are, I'm sure something's going on. Like, Mm -hmm. don't forget, we have had inspector generals fired and the secretary of state was under investigation. And, you know, there's no telling who's doing what with who. Some people are blaming Antifa and Soros. Some people are blaming blaming right-wing people. Like, all we know is that there are people who are not black people who are not, who are using George Floyd's death as an opportunity to to start chaos. 100%. We don't know for sure who they are and who sent them, but there is, it's obvious. Benef- the evidence that, is clear as day. I mean, something right. is going on and even African American people are starting to pick up on it. The ones that are thinking rationally that are not using their emotions, they're looking at this and they're like, look, man, this is messed up. Like the kid in the video, you know, he's showing the pile of bricks and he's like, come on, you know, it, it's it's just messed up and it's not it's not right because what happened to what happened if George Floyd was extremely difficult to watch it was very disturbing and it it was hard to not cry watching that video and then all of a sudden now it's all about this about the riots it's not even about George Floyd necessarily you know it's you hear about the chaos that's going on all the all the attention is going to this and it's turning deadly i mean what you you hear what happened to that uh, that guy that got ran over by the FedEx truck in St. Louis? Yeah, I saw that dude, video. I that had was to, really scary. I had to get off that video. I mean, it was messed up, dude. It was it was brutal. 
Um, yeah, he got dragged for a long dr- time. He got drugged to death. I mean, it just it dragged him for all the way down the road until he died, and they couldn't stop him. And it's tough because you're like, inside you're like, how dare that that FedEx driver do something like that? He just brutally killed a man. But then you're like, okay, if I was the one driving that truck and an angry mob comes up to me and they're slamming on my windows and doors and I'm scared that they're going to pull me out and kill me, I mean, how did he know that they weren't going to kill him? That's right. How did he know they don't have guns or whatever? Like, yeah. I mean, how would anybody react like that? I mean, you're sitting peacefully in your vehicle and then a whole massive mob of people who are out for blood anyway, Mm. um, they're not thinking straight. And so they're beating people with boards. And then we were talking about that guy in Dallas that was defending his store um, and got, which was not smart, in my opinion, to have a machete and agitate an angry mob, you know, uh, right. when you're well, by the yourself. Thing is, yeah, if you're defending, you just stay put. You defend, and if they come at you, then you defend yourself. You don't chase people. Yeah. And he chased, he chased. And then he ended up outflanked and he, you know, yeah, he paid he for it. Him. Yeah. He you paid know? the price and almost, and I don't think I heard that it wasn't even his store. He was just there kind of like trying to, you know, defend stuff on his own. The vigilante, you know, kinda, yeah. out there Vigil- to, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. just, just trying to be Mr. Tough guy. Like we don't need those guys. I don't know. Did you see the guy with the bow that shot his bow into a crowd. Oh no, I didn't see that. That happened in Utah. So there was an old oh white guy. God, so dude. he gets out and then they're in the protest and they're in the middle of the street. And then he pulls out a bow and then he says, all lives matter. And then he actually shoots his bow into a crowd and then it's on. They just jump him. They, they jump him. They beat the mess out of him. So then you see him later. Cause apparently he got arrested, right? Mm-hmm. The cops arrested him because he shot his bow into the crowd. So he got arrested, and then he's getting interviewed by a reporter. He's saying, yeah, I said all lives matter, and then they beat me up, but this isn't right. And then they're like, well, who beat you up? And he says two black guys. Listen, let me tell you, this was in Utah. Every single person that beat him up was white. Like, you can see in the video, it's every (laughs) single person that beat him up was was white. It was because he shot the boat into the crowd of protesters. And, you know, he was one of those old get-off-my-lawn guys. You know, right. Uh, <laughs> right. Oh, I know they, what you mean. Oh, they burned his car too. They flipped his car over and burned it. And he was talking about how he couldn't <laughs> even get home. Bro, that see, it's just like it's happening. It doesn't matter what color you are. It's <laughs> it's happening to everybody. It's like it's it, to me. It just seems like it's the media behind it pushing all these narratives, just creating chaos. I mean, yeah, it's they're making up stories that are not even true and using, you know, radical people, whether it's radical left, radical right. And they're creating this division. And that's what's, you know, the Bible talks about a house divided against itself will fall and a nation divided against itself will fall. You know, we're, mm-hmm. well, he, he hit the nail on the head when he said that there's agendas behind this and stuff's going on behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. They create, and I, I'm a firm believer this was, the, the riots are created, um, sparked by whoever, but uh, behind the scenes there's there's some type of agenda going on and this the riots are diverting from us paying What's attention going on, to yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whether it be, yeah. Whether it be um, the realistic... Uh, story behind the coronavirus being fake and all this kind of stuff is coming to head and now they need a diversion to create away from that well there's a lot of things i mean it it could be anything yeah that's the that's the whole thing behind this and like what was desmond was saying there's the facts are pointing to that there's someone behind like something bigger than what we realize is going on and that's something we can know as a fact now whether Who's doing it? Who's the puppet master pulling the strings? I don't think anybody could just, you know, be like, oh, okay, they're doing it for sure. Um, There's a lot of different groups that could be doing this, but there is an agenda because uh, there's a war over the direction of this country and where it's going. And, you know, you got the Republicans and the conservatives that feel 
that they want the country to move in this direction. They have the, these kind of morals that they want to move towards. And then you got the, the Democrats. And then I guess you would say liberals are like another form of the Democrats, just like the, the right wing extreme Republicans, you know, so everyone's got an agenda for this country and they're not willing to back down. And I think that's why like tension is so high. And um, I was telling someone the other day, I wanted to see what you thought about this, Desmond. Uh, I think part of the reason why this this uh, rioting also went as crazy as it did is uh, because people are already on edge about the COVID-19 coronavirus epidemic being uh-huh. shut, shut up in their homes, um, which, you know, that that causes people to get crazy when you're stuck in your home and you're broke because you can't work everyone's cranky their their emotions are on edge already and then something legitimate like this happens to a man that that you basically watch get murdered their life taken from them right in front of you and then all that built up anger i think that helped play a a role in that what do you think yeah well i mean not only that anger people are broke right now people have lost their jobs Right. People don't know how they're going to provide for their families. Mm-hmm. People have lost loved ones. Like right. they've buried people. You know, people have their that their parents have died alone. You know, stuff like that. Like that changes people. Like the the whole tenor of America is not good right now. Mm-hmm. And I want to add something else. We also have law enforcement inciting riots. So there have been multiple peaceful protests that. And, you know, so we already said that there's agitators mm-hmm. on the other side. Yeah. There are law enforcement people yeah, saw that videos. are ripping masks off mm-hmm. people, macing them, them, shooting them, pushing them, shooting them with rubber bullets, you know, hitting them with flashbangs, like arresting pre- mm-hmm. people, members of the press. Like right now we're in an unprecedented time. I don't I want to. Well, I don't for everyone old that I've talked to and I've spoken to a few older people to ask them is what's worse, the 50s and the 60s or now? And they've all said that now is worse Mm -hmm. because it's like we know more, but we know less. It's like we know more, but everybody knows there's no truth. So Mm -hmm. it's like we know more, but no one listens to each other. At least in the 50s and the 60s, there was still a baseline and people trusted the press. You know, Republicans, Democrats, conservative liberals, they all trusted the press that the press brought the facts and then they would work out their opinions on the facts later. Now it's like Fox News has one set of facts, CNN has another set of facts, and both sides call each other fake news. Yeah, and they're and all—it's so like, two sides of the same coin. I mean, it's uh, I I um, and that and that's what my opinion is on the whole news thing. I don't say I'm pro anything because the news has the same agenda. I mean, one, they want to make a lot of money. You're not going to make a lot of money talking about kittens being rescued from trees. You're talking about crazy stuff, uh, that people love drama. People are drawn to the TV. Why? I mean, that's why titles on videos draw people in. I'm learning that on my, uh, you know, do my YouTube channel. Like you got to create this, this epic thumbnail or this epic title. You won't believe what happens to this woman when she does this. And then you feel like you have to click on that video and it's just bogus. And I, the media, it just there's so much to it. There's so much subject matter behind all this, and it would just go on for hours. But I I just um, I just don't try to take sides with um, different medias because I feel like there's a uh, an agenda behind both of them. What do you think, Charlie? Well, the some are a little more reliable than others. Uh, although that's that's changing more and more now. Um, but um, for the most part, yeah, you, you're right. It's all. Well, there's supposed to be uh, news is supposed to be like Desmond was saying back in the day. It was neutral. Yeah. So that's the way it should be. So Fox News should not be pro Trump or pro, you know, CNN shouldn't be pro Obama. It should be pro facts. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? They should all be on the level playing ground and whenever somebody messes up as a leader, they're held accountable to that. And then when they do something good, they're also, you know, held accountable to the good things they do, you know, and, and those are exposed. So, 
Um, it's just an interesting time we're living in right now. This is going to go hmm. in the history books. What's your thoughts? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't your know. Your final how thoughts. It's end. Yeah. I just, I, I'm, I'm praying mm-hmm. uh, big time for our country um, because. Huh. Well, I'm praying for the rapture, honestly. I don't. <laughs> it's like, you know what? I, I just like, want out of here. Yeah. <laughs> just end it now, man. Just get I me mean, out of here, God. Is, yeah, it's been enough. It's enough, man. Uh-huh. I'm like, you know, when is enough enough? Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of done, yeah. really. Um, well, I, the... like people don't listen to each other. Mm-hmm. It's just, just nonstop chaos mm-hmm. right now. Uh, you know, and it's, it's dangerous. Well, the chaos is the enemy's playground. He loves that. That's right. And so. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried. Mm-hmm. You oh. know, I mean, I know we, God, the Lord hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but mm-hmm. you know, uh, come on, like, <laughs> I yeah, I, I'm I'm ready for a uh, for a new a new reality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, um, you know, my my thoughts right now, and I, I'm just coming at this as like a just normal human being and and how I feel about all this and and I just I don't know the way out man I don't know there's so many people out there I mean you get on social media and there's all these opinions just being puked all over you and like well this is the way it is and this is the facts of the facts and and nobody knows the full answers you know Uh, I mean in my heart I feel like Ultimately, God's the answer, you know, to solve all that's this. Not, but that's not necessarily true. What, what do you there's, think? There's, there's three people that know the facts in the situation. Are you going to say Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? No. Oh, I thought. That. But but, <laughs> that was, but but God does know right the truth. The person does, and then the two parties that initially are involved know the truth. True. That I mean, yeah. If you look at that that way. But what I'm talking about is like the big picture of how we get healing and restoration and uh, where we can all live together in harmony, like all of mankind and where we can love one another and serve one another. And uh, I mean, imagine if communities just came together like in the neighborhood and they just served one another. Like you have a need. Oh, let me help you out. You know, you need this done. Let me help you out. Well, I'll help you out, you know, and imagine what it would do to the world. But do you think that's possible? I don't know, man. Well, um, there's an example of it happening now where the citizens of Grand Rapids Oh yeah. Came came together and Yeah, out of all this craziness. Came came together up in uh this is up in Michigan. Um, they came together and are cleaning up the mess from the riots. Yeah. So there's people all over doing that. How is it in uh Fort Worth? Uh Fort Worth has been relatively quiet. You know, um, Fort Worth has been pretty quiet. Uh, from everything that I've heard, there's been no um, substantial uh, looting uh, accident. You know, looting. Mm-hmm. There's been no deaths, no no looting in Fort Worth. Now Dallas is a different story. Right, it's a bigger. You know, much bigger. <laughs> yeah. Um, hmm. Wow. Yeah, we 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 need we need people to do the right thing, yep. man. Like, yep. You know, it's. It, it sometimes it's hard to do the right thing. Mm-hmm. People know what they should do, but they, you know, they're they're caught up. They do the other and thing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and and you know, I'm really we need a move of the Holy Spirit. Like yeah. there are certain things that are that are not possible um, with anything but God. Like you know, it's, we need God. Like mm-hmm. <laughs> like right. God. Like yeah, we need you now. You right. know, like go. Come on. So, um, I mean, because at this point, um, just, um, just, you know, just arresting people or whatever, like that's not going to be enough. Like that's not, yeah, it's not going to change the emotions behind it. It's not going to change people's thoughts and how they view things. And, um, it, uh, it's going to, it's going to take something bigger. And like you said, I, I feel like, I mean, some of my listeners are probably don't believe in God, but I feel like God is the answer and that he could change, um, the hearts of man. You know, he could take someone that is broken and lost and, Mm -hmm. and 
completely transform their life. I mean, like you, when you, when you grew up and the things you went through and you didn't think it was possible for someone like you to, uh, to change. So I think next time I have you on, uh, maybe you could share your story in more detail. Um, that'd be awesome. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm a, like, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think that I would, that my life would be what it is right Mm -hmm. now. Yeah, I never thought it. that was possible. You made no. it, man. And I'm glad you did because I was able to meet you and uh you're you're definitely an outstanding person and and um that's why I'm talking to you today. I wanted to have you on and um and just hear what your views were on what's going on. I mean, I I can't relate uh to this as much as you can, you know, being a, a black man in America and uh all I can say, I mean, I'm half Mexican. So I, uh, (laughs) but I could just say, I feel your pain and what your, you know, your community is going through. And, um, and I just pray for, uh, I pray for peace, man. And, uh, that, that the tension would die down and that people would sit down at the table and, uh, things will start getting resolved. And, um, and, you know, and, and even with the, the law enforcement, I pray that out of this, that they would, learn that people actually do love them and appreciate them. The good ones, the good cops, <laughs> uh, that we are grateful for their sacrifices every day. Cause I'm sure it's hard to put on your badge and go to work knowing this might be the last day I go to work, Yeah, you know, and that's a very, yeah. very real reality. I mean, I saw some, some, uh, videos of cops getting shot, you know, just by approaching someone and telling them to take their hands out of their pocket and it just takes one second and it's the end of their, their mm-hmm. life, you know? And so I can't imagine what they're going through. Um, you know, when they, they're good people and they've saved many lives, but because of the, the few bad ones, they, their, uh, reputation is tarnished because of some bad cops, you know, and that's not right. So anyways, I, I don't want to keep you on uh all night i just wanted to okay. hear your point of view and um but we appreciate you being on the show and we'll definitely have you on again to uh talk about other things hopefully the ride will be over by then <laughs> the whole, yeah i'm ready yeah i'm COVID-19, yeah we, everything's uh, over. i'm ready for 2021 right. dude if it's gonna make any difference <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Or, or, I'm done with 2020 already. Like, yeah. Or, or we need push, a new push year. The re, push the rewind button and start over again. Start, I don't know if I want to start over again, man. <laughs> oh I don't man. Want to repeat. New Year's was so awesome for me. I was in New York City. Like, oh, it man. was amazing. Family, and it's like 2020 has just been like bomb after bomb after bomb. Yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, no, thank you. Like, yeah, let's I'll move. Pass. Let's move along a little bit and uh, get get on with this 2021 stuff. But uh, all yeah. right, man. Well, I'm gonna let you go. Thank you for being on the show. I'm gonna try to edit this thing tonight and have it up tomorrow. So, but uh, you're amazing. Thank you for everything you do, just for the community around you and all the teenagers that you've helped throughout your life and people and even myself. So. We will talk soon. All right. Thanks for having me. Take care. Yes, sir. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Oh, wow. So that was Desmond. He's a a really good man. I I used to work for him. Um, He was a director of Teen Challenge. So we, we have some amazing, amazing stories, man. So many stories, but we'll save that for another day. There's a got to be some good ones that come out of that. Out of Teen Challenge? Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. There were some great ones, but like I said, we'll save it for another day when I have him on here so we have some subject matter to talk about. Um, but yeah, we were talking about, we spent a long time talking about this whole uh, rioting stuff that's going on because it's very relevant. I mean, this is the major thing that's going on in this country and people are talking about it. And, um, it, it, a lot of things need to be discussed and I, there's really no perfect answer that you can give to all this, except for, we just want peace. We want everybody to feel peace and, uh, and like their voices being heard and, 
I hate that they feel like they have to tear a whole city apart just to get anyone to listen to them. And so, um, I don't think realistically anybody listens to them when they do that. Yeah. I mean, well, it takes the the focus off like we were saying, yeah. but anyways, um, but yeah, after all that, man, we were talking about how COVID-19 has kind of just slipped away. I mean, what, what do you, what have you been hearing about COVID-19 where we're at with, there has been nothing heard of. No COVID news at now. all. Like, no. I mean, I haven't been hearing much of anything. I've been trying to follow up on the whole stimulus, uh, whether they're going to do a second one. And there's just, you know, I heard there's going to be like $2,000 a month for like six months. And then I heard for one year and then I heard $1,200, one more $1,200 check. And then I, I hear, I mean, there's just all kinds of information, um, bunch of youtubers making a lot of money off this yeah. talking about the stimulus check and it's just really no no new news about it it's yeah. the, the latest thing that i have seen is um this gentleman on his youtube channel come out and basically said that um that we are lab rats lab rats yeah that we are lab rats because um they did a scientific experiment on us without our consent. And in certain situations, they can do that. Um, you know, in one of those situations is being under a so-called emergency order. Uh -huh. um, but they have to follow the whole procedures. Yeah. And they, and they just like the governor up in Michigan, found a kind of a loophole. He found a loophole to the loophole. In, in the in the law and he's actually got on his on his channel he's got um, basically what he says is um, that they have permission to do this scientific experiment or a scientific experiment um, but they can't do it within their own group they've got to have an outside scientist that's conducting this experiment Mm. so and they didn't they've got everybody is connected that's doing this and wow. basically what he's saying is the mask um the social distancing that's all a scientific experiment mm. there's been no proven facts there's been nothing to determine that masks do prevent or don't prevent there have been no studies that ma uh, social distancing does work or doesn't work mm. by an outside source it's just by um, the Gates Foundation and everybody that's connected to that. Hmm. Wow, that's the first time I heard about that. Um, the guy, let me pull up the guy's name. And he actually, he's got on there where you can go on to um, uh, you can fill out Form 95 and go against um, you have to listen to the video to, to find out what agency um, cause I couldn't write that fast. Uh, the guy's name is, um, David Martin. David Martin. Um, but there's a, a form 90, a, a form 95 claim and you can actually claim, um, if you've lost any income because of this, so if you've lost so your you can job, he, taxes. Yeah, or? nope. He's you put out this form ninety five. You send it to the agency that he's listed in this YouTube video. Um. And what it is is you, if you've lost your job, lost income, um, anything of that capacity, because of this, uh, what he's calling a uh, scientific experiment then um, you can file a claim against that ag agency. And he's trying to get 30 million people to do it. And he says, I, I just want 30, you know, as many people as possible to flood this. They have to respond within uh, 90 to 180 days. Um, but you have up to two years to file this form. Wow. Um, I actually downloaded the form. I have, oh, that's I have, what you gave me? Yeah. So. That's interesting. So if... 
that seems like something you guys want to check out. Yeah, it's uh, uh, yeah, David Martin. You should David be able Martin. to. You should be able to. He does a butterfly of the week. And he said this is the most crucial butterfly of the week. It's cute. Yeah, this is the most crucial one that uh, episode he's done. Um, cool. Well, yeah, I'll have to check that out. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, COVID nineteen was here yesterday. And uh, gone tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. It, it just, my head's just spinning just think about everything that's going on. So, uh, But in good news, uh, uh, Trump signed a bill the other day. Uh, did you see that? The social yes, media. Yes, I did. The social media cannot. Discriminate against people. Yep. And um what I went through on my Facebook page and went through and um, blocked fact check and poly check. Oh, yeah, that's poly check. And mm-hmm. all my stuff has not been censored since. Well, apparently Trump, he, he signed an executive order to weaken the power of social media companies that, you know, I guess before they had so much power to where they're like, eh, no, that's not legitimate. That's not facts. Or the, and number, then they of, just, or the number of people that can see your post. Yeah. And, you know, to be honest, like, I think he made the right decision because that's a scary thing. I mean, whether you're left or right, the social media, imagine, like, if social media could truly uh, control what people's eyes are seeing. Um, like when you go on YouTube and you type up a story and absolutely everything from one side only shows up and everything else is put way underneath, like there's clearly an agenda behind that. And that is not right. That Uh, should not happen. And then when someone posts something now, I do understand there is a ridiculous amount of false information going around. I mean, I had, I had, um, times where I posted an article and someone would be like, dude, that's not even true at all. And then I look it up and find out, Oh yeah, I just, you know, forwarded somebody else's message and I didn't even think about it. Well, there's, there's Babylonian B that's that's out there. Oh, that's a, uh, Oh, it's like a satire. And that one, that one is basically just a, it's a joke. I mean, yeah, satire is hilarious. Yep. So they're, they just post stuff for Make, make oh, I remember up. my first introduction to the Onion. <laughs> onion is f- a satire, like it's like the number one. And uh, I'm I'm reading like the story, and I'm like, oh my god, dude, I can't believe this is crazy. And I repost it, and then somebody's like, dude, you realize this is satire, right? Satire news. I'm yeah, like, usually if I'm not 100 percent sure and I can't find any fact checks or facts on it, then I post. <laughs> if this is real. This is yeah. crazy or something like that. Yeah, I, I, you know what? That's funny because I do that too. I'm like, <laughs> uh, can it? Well, like when I saw that video uh, about the bricks being dropped off at the riot sites, um, I put on there like, can anyone confirm this? Because I've learned that a lot of times when you repost something, um, there's there's more to it. Like we were talking earlier, there's always a bigger picture. So when you just take one thing. And you go with that without looking at the full story, the full picture, um, and you it, it's just not a good thing. You want the full story. And so, um, so yeah, looking up things, knowing the facts um, as much as you can. I mean, so, but yeah, so Trump signed an executive order banning companies like Twitter from having all the power that they had before to um, choose who they think, uh, like who who should have the power or not, you know, like mm-hmm. Twitter. Well, it's been proven, and a guy a guy's come out. I can't remember the guy's name, um, but he's come out and um, did a sworn statement testimony mm-hmm. that. Um, um, so many people. Uh, this was back in the during the 2016 election, when uh, Mr. Uh, what's his name? 
Okay. And the 2016 Obama? No, he was running again, running with Hillary and. Uh, oh, uh, you're talking about Tim Kaine? No, he was running against her. Against her in the primary. Oh, Bernie Sanders. There we go. I don't know why. My, brain fart. Yeah, I had a brain cramp there for a minute. But anyway, um, it's this guy come out and testified that uh, it, that Google dropped his stuff down and her stuff up. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's true. I mean, I noticed that lost numerous votes. And I remember I would go on YouTube and I would type in something, and all I saw was CNN every single time. CNN was always on top, ABC, MSNBC, always on top. And I'm not saying, and like I said earlier, I'm well, that's, not like a that's news because, guy. A that's pro because news. they're on top of the news. They're on top. I wish I had. No, do I? Yeah, I do. <laughs> that's awesome. Not. Nah, oh, man. I'm getting tired of talking about all this crazy <laughs> stuff. I. I just want to do challenges. Maybe that's all we should do now. <laughs> do crazy challenges. What's what's up next? Well, I'll tell you what's up next. This flag right here. You guys see the new uh, studio layout? I got tired of that window being there. It was just ugly looking. And uh, look at that beautiful face, by the way. Um, wait, no, did, apparently. Wait, wait, did you put me up on the screen? Nope. Charlie's oh. not there. It's not your show, Jenny. <laughs> no, uh, anyways, uh, what was I saying? I was saying something that you distract. Oh, so I got tired of that setup, so I, I just put an American flag because I want to represent the country right now, especially with everything that's going on, show my pride for the country and how much I love the country I live in, pro-America, still the greatest country ever, even with all the chaos going on. But yeah, love my flag. I'm going to keep it there, and uh, I hope I don't get hatred for it. Why, why would I care anyway? So, um, But a lot of things changing. We're yeah, there's more changes to come. More changes to come uh, very, very soon. As a matter of fact, I think I'm next— I'm getting kicked out, put in the corner. No. We're, <laughs> uh, Charlie's going to be— uh, I gave him the role of being the fact guy or the, the, the yeah, researcher. I can't even remember people's name, but I'm going to be He's the like, fact uh, checker. Uh, wait, what's my name? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, Charlie's going to be over in this other part of the studio. It's under construction. It, it should be done by the next episode. Uh, well, you know what? I still got to wait for my microphone to come in the mail. Yeah. Everything's been on hold. It's insane, man. So as soon as I get all my equipment in, then Charlie's going to be over there. You can't see it now. Um, and then my guest, I'm going to have a guest with me, and we're going to be doing three people on the show, which will be much better. So I'll, I'll be here when he can't find a guest. Yeah, and then Charlie is, <laughs> like I said in the introduction, he is faithful, very kind, and uh, he likes to make me eat onions. Hey, by the way, I heard that if he gets a hundred subscribers, oh. he was willing to do that again. No, not that. that I need a different yeah. challenge. No, I need I, a better one. That can't get any better than that. Um, what could I do? That I something new, different. Uh, if you have any ideas, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Comment below. Comment if below. you if I okay. Comment below with a challenge that I have to do, and if I get a hundred subscribers. I will pick one of those. Once he reaches 100, though, then it goes to 500 before he has another challenge. So. Yeah. You got to give me a break here. <laughs> I mean, I did the hot sauce stuff, melted my face off, which, by the way, Charlie, the listeners have not forgotten that you got to do your whipped cream. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Charlie's got to do the whipped cream challenge. When I find it. When you find it. I'll find it for you, and I'll make I, sure it's I here. I specifically said red onion, so those are everywhere. But apparently, some stores don't carry the Guys, Reese's peanut butter. think about this. I did a raw, nasty red onion, okay? A lot of people... It's your show. Most people would agree. <laughs> that's disgusting, you know? Oh, I mean, that onion smelled really good, by the way. And uh, 
Charlie's challenge is Reese's peanut butter whipped cream. Come on. It's like, oh, I'm doing the candy bar challenge or the, the bowl of ice cream. I guess it's bad if you don't like I it. I could give you the hottest chocolate bar to eat. I can do it. For the next one. Yeah, just let me know what you guys think. But if I reach 100 subscribers, I will do just that. That challenge. At right, right, right now it stands at a red, another red onion unless you guys come up with something better. Something better. And please come up with something better. I don't want to do another onion. Oh, man, it's crazy. Um, so, yeah. So, so where are you at now? 50... 57 subscribers. Oh, boy. That's going to be hard to do. They might catch me if I do that many. <laughs> <John>. <laughs> no, Which, we have not done that. No, we don't do that. And by the way, I did want to talk about that. Uh, that's one of the things I wanted to discuss is um, with me getting into YouTube, I'm learning the ins and outs and, and researching other people. And I'm learning some of the dirty things that are, people are doing in this business and I guess it's legal technically, but it's cheating. People are buying subscribers. So I'm not going to name names, but there's people that um, that you think is killing it or doing it insanely good on YouTube. And then you go through and you and you thought you think, huh, well, let me check here the views. And then the uh, are you well, talking handsome guy? Very handsome. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, absolutely <laughs> beautiful for real. No exaggeration. And, but then you go look and you're like, oh my gosh, all these comments below are fake. Fake account. You click on it, fake. Click on it, fake. No, nothing loaded on their channel. Click on it, fake. I mean, it's, but people do that. And I mean, tons of people do that. And uh, it's, uh, I, I don't want to do that, guys. I want to build this channel organically and give you good content one raw red onion at a time one raw i mean by the time i get a million subscribers i will like red onions <laughs> <laughs> uh which they're purple by the way they're not red um i just gotta get that out there um but yeah i don't want to be that i don't want to cheat the system i know there's a lot of mixed opinions i i saw some people commenting uh saying that well, you can't, it's impossible to have a successful YouTube channel unless you buy your subscribers and buy the views and, and all this stuff. And, um, I don't, I don't know, man. I just, I feel like it's paying for a trophy and saying you won the race. So that's just my opinion. Well, it's like having a double that starts the race for you and then, and then you jump, get, you get to double, stand up there. The double jumps out at the end of the race and finishes it. Or it's like, <laughs> oh, but I, I want to do this the, the hard way, but the good way. So that when I get to my goals, um, I can feel proud knowing that I put in the crazy hard work and the long hours and the sacrifices and have legitimate people that like my content. And yeah, it's rough at first. I mean, I'm, I'm brand new to this. I've never done a podcast before. Never did editing before, never did any of uh, the graphic design. Every bit of this stuff is new to me. So when you look at my older videos, you see it getting a little bit better um, as I do it more and more. And of course, yeah, you can, any kind of pro or whatever could sit back and just pick my stuff apart. But, you know, whatever. I think most people, you know, would give me a thumbs up and be like, good job, man. He has Keep... me to pick him apart. Don't worry. That's right. Charlie just picks me apart. <laughs> you know, uh, like that onion that I picked apart. No, I picked it apart. You ate it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm, I just love it. It's fun. By the way, I forgot to tell you this. What? When we were walking through the store, Judah was telling everybody that his dad's doing the onion challenge. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. That's funny, man. So my son, <laughs> uh, yeah, said, <laughs> is uh, daddy's doing the, the onion challenge to everyone at the grocery store. That's great. Thank you, son. <laughs> well, I need to teach him how to give them the link to my YouTube account because he could be like the secret weapon. He's yeah. so adorable. I mean, how could you say no to my son, Judah? And he's been on the show. He's been on the show, episode 10, I believe, um, if you want to see his adorable 
amazing face, um, which he got the best of me because apparently I'm hideous, Charlie. <laughs> I hear that all the time. Like, dude, how in the world could you possibly have anyone attractive? You're so ugly. Like, why? Thank you. Yeah, that's all you can I love, do. I love, I love hearing give him that. Give the sarcasm right that back. I'm ugly. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> I like never a, realized that, but never, re- never realized it. Thank you that I am a hideous looking human being. Um, so yeah, it's, everything's getting better. I'm loving it. Um, at this point I'm just rambling on. So it's hot, miserably hot up here. We still haven't fixed the air problem. Um, it's probably what 80 degrees up here. Uh, well, Well, you actually have a. You can check the temperature up here. And, well, it says eighty-one. So. Okay. That's in. So. I don't think that's going off your phone though. I think that's going off of, like, what the data says. But. Anyways, this is why I want to have three people on the show so that we can just keep, you know, everything going, going, going. And um, sometimes I just run out of stuff to say, and then I just start. Yeah. At this point in time, it would be time for what's. In Charlie's yeah, bag. Yeah, what's in Charlie's bag? Let's just do it for the sake what's of it. What's in Charlie's bag? And it looks like there's nothing in Charlie's nothing, bag today. Nothing in Charlie's bag today. We're taking, nothing. Uh, taking a break. Matter of fact, we're probably going to uh, do something unique with that. Um, and it's not the future of that. It won't be food every time. Okay. Um, and two... We're probably not going to do it every episode like we were before. Oh, it would have been just weird if I brought a brick in there today. Oh, that would. I didn't know anything about the bricks. Oh yeah, that, that would have been, been really creepy and weird. Yeah, and then I would. Everyone would look at you and be like, "Are you the guy, the <laughs> umbrella guy?" Clearly, he's not the umbrella guy. So I'm going to go ahead and. Uh, no, that dude was like 200 pounds lighter than I am. And... Hmm. Well, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. This time, I'm not going to end with music. I'm going to try to do things a little differently. Um, and next next uh, podcast, there's going to be some slight changes to say the least. Thank you for listening to This Can Make Us Famous podcast. I'm out. Bye, everybody. Bye.